Welcome back to the Metro Madness League. Tonight we have the Gravely Gengars going up against the Charming Charmillions. These are two of the top teams of this season. Both are four in one. And one is going to have to go down with the loss here tonight. Gengar starting off with their score bunny. They're going to go ahead with a mock punch. That doing a decent amount of damage. The fight for the top spot here tonight. Whoever gets five wins, I think, will solidify their spot in the playoffs. Oh, my goodness. Super effective bubble beam coming from the Charmander. Good job by the Charmillions. Good way to start. Score Bunny already below half its health right here. There goes the Fusion Flare. It is a very strong stab fire type move. It's resistant, but not a bad move to use. Charmander taking a bit of damage. Still above half health. There goes a Rock Smash Charmander focusing on those good moves. Score Bunny, 38 HP left. Gengars need to change up their strategy so far. Here comes Score Bunny now with the Poison Fang. Poison Fang deals a lot of damage. Charmander at about a quarter HP. Turning things around. There goes the Charmander now with the Swords Dance. Maybe too little too late for that setup. Got to do that earlier. Right now may not be the chance. We can see if it can survive the next hit from the Score Bunny. But if it chooses to use a decent move, Charmander will be out. Here comes Score Bunny now. It's going down with another Fusion Flare. The second of the match, it's resisted. I think Charmander might be able to survive it. It doesn't. Charmander goes down to the Fusion Flare. First Pokemon out on the Charmillions. Speaking of, Charmillion will be hitting the field now for their team. Score Bunny looking pretty good. Didn't start off too hot, but it quickly turned things around. There goes the Charmillion now with the fake out. Rarely see that work in these, but it does. And that's going to cause Score Bunny to flinch. It's in the danger zone, and Charmillion might be able to take it out with little damage. Well, no damage at all. Uh, but it chooses to go for a lovely kiss instead. A charming Charmillion indeed. That pushed the score bunny to sleep. Kind of a waste. Didn't really need to put it to sleep. Just knock it out. But it's going to be unable to attack at the moment. So pretty good. Here comes the Charmillion now with a sludge wave. And that will do it. Sludge wave. Knocks out the score bunny. And the Gengars lose their first Pokemon. Moving on to their Marsh Top now. March top with the type advantage. We'll see if the Gengars can take uh, full advantage of that. Charmillion gets to go first, though. And it's going to go ahead with a psych up. No stat changes. So, wasted turn. You'll be copying March top stat changes, but it is copied nothing. Now, March top gets that turn. Sky attack. It's going to take two turns, but it is a strong move. We'll see how much damage that deals to the Charmillion. Charmillion now going with the curse. Interesting. Okay, so setting up uh, for the Charmillion is actually a good time to set up, unlike their Charmander. It's going to lower its speed. Not something I guess it needs, and it's going to raise that attack and defense, hopefully giving it a bit of an advantage. The Sky Attack is going to land, however, and it does a real good amount. Although you have to wonder, did that defense uh, boost help them out? Reduce the amount of damage they took from that sky attack. Here comes the icy wind. That's going to be not very effective. Marshop going first now due to the speed drop from the Charmillion. And it gets another speed drop due to the icy wind. Doesn't do a lot of damage. Still, Charmillion gets to still be above half its health here with a sand tomb. Interesting. Now, won't do a lot of damage to the march time. All right, stand correctly. It was a crit. Oh, my goodness. And it will damage the march time at the end of every turn. Not a bad idea from the Tribe Millions. That critical hit came in handy. Here comes the march time now. Going for it with the round. Tribe Million finally below half its health here. The battle is ramping up as Charmillion goes with a charge. Can it take advantage of that boost that it gets? 
from the charge. You see it's special attack or special defense, excuse me. It's gonna go up right there. Now Charmeleon doesn't have to attack every turn due to the Sand Tomb. So they can take advantage of that and do some setup moves to help them out in the future. That's that's the opening they gave themselves by using that Sand Tomb. But Marsh Chomp is gonna disappear using Shadow Force. Charmeleon's probably gonna miss his next move. Uh, tries to go for a shell sidearm doesn't hit the sand tomb still does damage as marsh Tomp goes below half its health and here we go marsh Tomp almost taking out the charmillion but charmillion hangs on just a little bit of health left it goes for the smackdown and that's gonna do just a little bit of damage not very effective but that sand tomb still in effect doing all the damage it needs to get it into the danger zone. That hanging on was very important for that Charmeleon because if it was knocked out, the sand tomb would not have done damage right there. There goes the leaf storm. That would do it for the Charmeleon, but it did its job right there. Hanging out just to do as much damage as possible to this marsh Tomp. Giving the last Pokemon on the Charmeleon's the best chance it has to knock it out. So the tribes are, it's gonna be out here now. There we go, Charizard's out on the field. Marsh Tomp in the danger zone. Can it deal some damage or will Charizard quickly dispose of it? Here we go, there goes a sweet and interesting choice from the Charizard, lowering the evasiveness of the Marsh Tomp. But it does give Marsh Tom a chance to do some real damage. Here we go, Marsh Tom. Now with the Razor Shell, that is a stab. Super effective move. That's why they shouldn't have gone for the Sweet Scent. Charizard below half its health. And it's going to lower its defense. Not a good look. Here we go, Charizard. Uses the Gyro Ball. Gyro Ball does. Absolutely nothing. Bad move choice by the Charizard right there. As Marshtom gets another chance to attack, goes for a low sweep, not to resist it. So it does actually a decent amount for a move that, uh, was that resisted? I guess it wasn't. It's a decent amount of damage though. Charizard gets to go. And there goes a fusion third time. We've seen fusion flare. Stab fire move from the Charizard. I think that might do it for Marshtom. And it finally goes down, but the Charmillions are not looking good. Crit didn't matter right there. Cinderace on the field. And the Gengars have all the momentum. Here we go. Cinderace gets to go first. It goes for a mud shot. Changes itself into a ground type, but it doesn't affect the Charizard, giving the Charmillions a chance to try and turn things around. Charizard goes for a Flare Blitz. Another Staff Fire type move. Does a whole bunch of damage to Cinderace. It gets it to 29 HP, but it dies to the recoil. Oh my goodness. They took a gamble. The Charmillions took a gamble, trying to take it out with the Flare Blitz. It did a massive amount of damage but it was a bit too much and they did not consider that recoil so unfortunately they go down and the gengars get to keep the top spot as they go up five in one while the charmillions are four in two i hope you enjoyed that match if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel we really appreciate all of the support if you want to become a patron, there is a link in the description below that you can follow to join. Also, we have a Discord. We'd love for you to be a part of the community, so follow that link as well to join the Discord. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.